Hi, class and, and uh, uh, parents and students. Uh, we're going to try a little experiment here and actually put this on, on a, sort of a video of just a recap, quick recap of the uh, the class structure we had. This will be session one. Uh, I divide it in two areas, session one, session two, obviously. A little easier to uh, uh, communicate and or transfer through the internet. But we've got uh, the first page, basically my personal testimony and brief bi biography. Uh, we go into the class structure, expectations. Uh, I know you guys did really great, so I know some of those ex expectations were met and exceeded. Uh, thank you so much for, for your diligence. Uh, and the, the first project, if you remember going back, just how to hold the pen and good penmanship. You know, it's not just about uh, holding the pen with your forefinger and thumb. It's, it's about how to move your wrist and ho hopefully your whole arm. The dynamics of, of a pen itself, you know, basically how this, uh, the ballpoint, how it structures itself. You can kind of feel the pen when you're, when you're drawing. You can kind of hear it too. So that's the kind of thing that gives you that very light touch, medium and dark touch to the, to the work. We hit on just some basic just, just exercise when it came to horizontal vertical lines, uh, simple shapes, how those shapes become three-dimensional objects, how those objects relate to things around us, how a, a circle becomes a sphere, becomes an apple, two-point perspective. We have the horizon line. If you remember, that's, that's your eye level. That's what you're looking at here. This is you standing next to this or something. And then you've got the vanishing points here. So you're, this one, you're looking down on this. In a single point perspective, usually you're sort of exploring this idea of depth of field. So we get the buildings are larger at, towards us as they recess towards the center line or that, that single point perspective. We then get into applications of those. You know, it's something as simple as a cylinder. Uh, it, you know, it's closer to you. The circle becomes an ellipse. Uh, even something like a sandwich becomes sort of a cylinder. And it's, it, again, it's bigger towards you as it recesses back this way. The buildings, we, we did a three-point perspective where the center line is in the center of the earth and the drama of looking down on a building, something you would see in comic books. Remember our Spider-Man image here. And of course, the idea of how something as simple as a, a strawberry can be started with a simple triangle. Here's also, uh, here's the, again, the exploration of the, of the, uh, the fruit, love to draw fruit, they come still lifes. This is one of my sketches from my, from my sketchbook. And then we moved into our first project with uh, the Renaissance. Renaissance era, and Renaissance means rebirth. And this time in, in history of mankind, as well as art, uh, you know, they were discovering how things could be realistic. There was colors. They had this principle that the perspectives and how things looked three-dimensionally was very important at this time. Okay. And a lot of the Renaissance painters' uh, draw, uh, drawings were simple shapes at first, things like flowers. And we did flowers at first. Part of this influence, we also had a great influence of women involved in Renaissance. Uh, they don't get a lot of notoriety right now, but they were also involved. And you had uh, this one is Sofonispa Anguissala. Okay, a little tough to pronounce. That's probably why she doesn't get a lot of notations in, 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 in history because it's really tough to pronounce her name. But again, a dynamic artist in her own right. Women were coming along at this time. Kind of followed along, along with the guys, quite frankly, through the history of art. We looked at the simple principles. We looked at the Sistine Chapel and, and how the hand structure here between Adam and God. Uh, just a classic, classic shape. From there, we moved into uh, Claude Monet. And we have the Impressionists. And by this time, the Impressionists were, were using sort of these principles of real life, like the perspectives. But now they were using colors and dynamic images that were more, more of, their, of their mindset, you know, things that their imagination was conjuring. Another Impressionist at the time is Mary Cassatt. And what's interesting about Mary was she, not along with the rest of the guys, as most of the males in that genre were just doing portraits of people, she was doing families. I thought this was very interesting. So again, her consumer, the people that were buying her art, were looking for family portraits. We looked into how to do, how to do a face, some of the dynamics of the circle, where the eyes are located, you know, through half the circle, the center line, all the details, how this divides itself up between the nose and the mouth. And these are principles that will just stay with you the rest of the time you're drawing. We looked at uh, compositions in terms of this was interesting by, um, this is now uh, Paul Cezanne. And Paul Cezanne is, is doing composition of still lifes. And if you remember, we went from this into our own still life study, brought in some pictures of water, and we looked at the depth of uh, how water and the thickness of glass how interesting that can be, you know, you got to kind of, you draw the, 
the thickness of the glass as well as the inner and outer of the glass. You see through it, you see these reflections, you see the fluid, and I know we had a lot, a lot of fun with that as well. From there, we moved into Art Nouveau style. And there's a group that was out of Scotland. Uh, Margaret MacDonald McIntosh uh, was one of the main leaders and her sister. And uh, they started this style of which now we're taking the human form as an example and putting it in this almost sort of exotic kind of uh, settings. We create the own graphics around the compositions that we're now working with. This is some of the work out of my own, my own uh, sketchbook. From there, we start working to a little bit of, uh, well, the Art, Art Nouveau and how it affects art, architecture. And this is uh, Antonio Gaudi. Again, he worked out of, uh, he worked in, in Spain, uh, Barcelona, Spain, and he did some amazing pieces of, of uh, architecture. Uh, but a little complicated, I think, for, our, for us. I know for me, it's very complicated. So we moved into Art Nouveau lamps. And what was there anything about Art Nouveau lamps was, this was something that occurred about 14 years after Thomas Edison had discovered the light bulb. If you remember, we looked at the light bulb, original, the original light bulb, we drew the light bulb. And, uh, but this gentleman by the name of uh, Tiffany came along and he basically took the light bulb and he made it into a piece of art form. Again, along with this whole Art Nouveau flowering type of uh, styling venue. And what was interesting, we discussed, you know, for the first time, you really not just had a light bulb, a product in your house, but you could have an actual garden in a sense. You had a flower that lit up. And you know, it's quite amazing when you think about the times, how technology now is affecting art and design and bringing it into the, to the home for the average person. We looked into cubism. And obviously you can't do cubism without Pablo Picasso. And uh, he did a, he, you know, he, again, he's restructuring now reality. He's restructuring the human form into these very artistic, emotional shapes. Although he, you know, his drawing skills were made fantastic. He could draw one line type of geometry of shapes uh, he was also inspired by um, the African mask and this impression of the human form. So I, I did also some work in my own sketchbook. I love the line work that created by Cubanism. But he also, we, we had, I know we had a lot of fun with this in class. Uh, the idea that we were taking now, we were breaking down the, what we'd learned about the human form and especially the face, and we were breaking this to a common denominator of just eyes and lips and a nose or eyebrows, and now it became this, just this impression of a, of a design or impression of somebody that, uh, we, that uh, Picasso was painting. And I know you guys had fun with that because you all had a chance to draw each other uh, using this sort of form. That was a lot of fun. Oh, on a personal note, I kind of think a lot of this sort of extreme nature you see in cartoons and graphics that deal with, uh, you know, uh, things you'll see in comic books and things like that. I think these characters were also uh, also very dynamic and very simple shapes. Uh, from there, we moved into uh, Alexandra uh, Exter. And, she, and again, she was very interesting because she basically, uh, she was from Russia, Russian artist. And uh, I remember I showed you the, uh, the video, the silent movie that she did. That was, that was amazing. The uh, uh, Alexandra Exter's uh, Aditya, uh, Queen of Mars. And this was the first Russian um, uh, sci-fi, uh, silent movie. I think it was probably the first time you guys had seen a silent movie, which I thought was interesting. So from there, we looked into just the body structure, the eight high to seven high structures. From there, we went into Art Deco styles. Okay, again, this style came out of the idea of a, of a world where we were creating things, mass producing things. We had architecture, simple products like a radio. Uh, you can see a great example of this down in, uh, obviously in Santa Ana. And uh, I made fun of the fact that the, the Chrysler building in, uh, in New York is always being made fun of in disaster movies, They're always blowing that up. But again, this is a very strong element of, of art deco sort of ornamentation. But uh, we didn't draw the buildings, then we basically went into fashion. And again, how art deco had transformed fashion to these very linear, very linear lines from Victorian, very sort of this fluff into these very straight lines in fashion. This was characterized by Coco Chanel. Uh, she would basically just revolutionize women's fashion at the time. And then we did some drawings of that. Some of my own work. We, I think we briefly looked into uh, Gianfranco Fiore. Again, he, uh, he, did some, he did some amazing fashion work. Uh, and we looked at some of his work. By then we moved to America now. We spent a lot of time in Europe. We moved to America with uh, Frederick Remington and uh, his focus on, on Westerns. We learned how to draw a horse. Again, proportion studies, back to the idea of the circles, creating circles and how to build these up. You know, 
um, and then create the total the total outline of the horse some details uh, the right this is out of my sketchbook page again but yes i always try to do that in class i always try to sketch it out first in a sketchbook to see if i could do it then i could i could teach you and we had some examples of them uh, the horse as well as how to put the horse in motion which was interesting you know again the idea of you put this up in the air and you you put the shadow underneath it and this shows this distance of height and motion again from my own sketchbook we looked at dogs and cats and that's a favorite uh, the idea how to use the circles again to create these images of you know the main body, the head, the linear shape of the of the uh, the linear forms of the uh, the legs where the elbows are, feet, things like that. Again, I, this was out of my sketchbook, but I couldn't resist. I didn't want to take myself out of it, but I'm also I just drew myself as well. I kind of use these same styles. This is sort of that Cuba style, but uh, we looked at how to structure uh, dogs and cats. There were also some impressionists of dogs and cats, and so uh, obviously a favorite subject, and also some ones that were just very spontaneous in nature. Uh, insects, that's a favorite of mine. I love insects. I think they're just wonderful to, to do images of, and you guys did a, again, a real great job of those. Is that on my sketchbook? 